Um, the uh, event is designed to be audio one way, so um, there have been some questions about speakers and microphone setups and things. Um, all you should be able to do is hear my dulcet tones. Um, I can't hear you. Uh, I can't see you and you can't see me other than the delightful mugshot on the first slide of this presentation. Um, so uh, in terms of questions and dealing with any issues that you may have during or after the webinar, if you've got any questions, just use the GoToWebinar toolbar facility that you've got, type in a question, and then for those that want to hang around at the end of the webinar, more than happy to answer any questions. Um, and if you want, if, whether you've asked any or not, you can hang on and listen to the answers if that's something you're interested in. So give or take this thing should run up close to the hour mark. Got a lot of stuff to go through. Um, and so um, um, I'll um, keep an eye on time. And as I say, I'm more than happy to deal with questions towards the end. In regards to um, slides, copies of, etc., you will automatically get invited to look at a pre-recording of this or a recording of the tonight's session if you want to review any notes and things so you'll you'll get a, access to that um, and in terms of what we're going to cover this evening um, heavily focused on LinkedIn of course um, it is really quick wins that you can get whether you've got a profile or not whether you're looking to set one up or not it's really there to give you a, a, some guidance on things that can make a difference quickly um, to use that horrible cliche, the low-hanging fruit, if you like. Um, there's so much to LinkedIn, we could take forever to talk about it, but there are some things that if you do it properly, you can do it quite quickly and it can be quite effective and ultimately um, help get you more attention and interest from recruiters or employers or whoever you're trying to target. So um, before I go any further, um, you've been invited by Talent Spa. Um, I work for a company called CV and Interview Advisors. The two aren't related in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I thought I'd better explain a little bit about who on earth we are as the CV and Interview Advisors. Um, so it won't surprise you that we're a provider of what we call career enhancement services. That's a variety of things from CVs to LinkedIn profiles to interview coaching. Um, the team here is all experienced people who've been in corporate life, recruitment, hiring, HR, etc. Um, so um, a bit like my own background, which is a mixture of corporate stuff, recruiting stuff, being a reviewer of CVs, a writer of CVs. Um, so our message really is that we would like to think we have some credibility in the marketplace. We know enough about how these things work and um, how people today use them, both from an employment and a recruiter side. side. So um, how people recruit and the tools they use to find people is stuff that we understand very well. Um, and and I, I say that only really to hopefully give you confidence that we do know enough about our subject matter and that we just didn't wake up one morning thinking it would be a good idea to talk about LinkedIn or indeed CV writing. We actually are the resident experts lurking behind the scenes to quite a few uh, of the Chartered Institute membership organizations that lurk around in the UK and Europe um, as their sort of specialist advisor and provider of advice on career enhancements, products and services. So we see a lot of things from a lot of different angles. So we cover accountancy, IT, sales, business development, purchasing, procurement, supply chain, logistics, even coming, taking people out of, say, the armed forces or the public sector and moving into the private sector. We see things from the, you know, pretty much the, the whole round um, and, uh, and how people work with that kind of information. Importantly, uh, and this message will come across loud and clear this evening, um, if you don't know what the hot skills, again, a bit of a cliche I'm afraid, but it's a, quite a nifty way of just describing things that are important right now in the marketplace. If you don't know what the hot skills are for your particular sector or area of expertise, um, it's something you need to find out uh, and get savvy with because uh, it makes a big difference. Um, as you'll see shortly. And so we, we know what those hot skills are in a variety of the sectors that I just mentioned. Um, and bottom line is um, we've got a good track record in writing CVs and then moves on to that. And, and, and I guess you could assume LinkedIn profiles as well that ultimately help people secure more interviews. So I'm coming at this from a position that most people are probably hanging on this evening wanting to know how they can improve their chances of being spotted as a potential new employee for someone. There may be a few contractors on board who are looking for their next piece of work. So the same principle applies. 
if you're looking at yourself crudely as a product or a service to a marketplace, um, most people want to be interested in, in finding out how they can maximize their exposure to that marketplace, uh, either via a CV or a LinkedIn profile. And it just so happens we're going to be focusing on the LinkedIn profile this evening and how to get the most out of that. But there are strong parallels between the two, of course. A um, bit of an obvious question in some regards, but it is important to take a bit of a, a view on what on earth LinkedIn is in, in uh, what LinkedIn is in the first place. And if you um, step back some time when it was all set up and how it sort of originated very crudely, it replicated and automated the process that if any of you have got sort of more than 10, 15 years experience of doing anything, um, replicated the process of when people used to go and meet folk, um, even pre-internet days, you'd have meetings, you'd exchange business cards, you'd store the business card, and you'd build up a network of people that you could talk with, phone, write letters to uh, pre-internet, et cetera, et cetera. You'd build up a network. And LinkedIn sort of came in and, and steamrolled over all those existing traditional ways of doing business. Not that they've disappeared, but it provided a really neat way of automating and maximizing exposure to people you might want to talk with. It has become the preeminent uh, professional networking site. Um, a lot of our clients ask us, um, if they don't really understand LinkedIn, and I'm going to assume a relatively modest level of understanding exists about what LinkedIn is and how to make use of it. I'm sure there's some of you who are very adept at using it and maybe have been on it and, and get the most out of it. But the, the average, as far as we see it, is that actually most people are only using a tiny fraction of its abilities. Some people are put off by it, um, have odd perceptions about it. Um, some people don't want to go near it with a barge pole. Um, and, and our advice to anybody with a commercial background uh, looking for work is that uh, there, there's, a, there's a tipping point now, and it almost is at the stage where if you're, not, if you're not on LinkedIn with an effective profile, you're damaging your prospects. But more on that later. So it has become the place to be, um, but it is a professional commercial business networking site. It's not a Facebook, a Twitter, or a MySpace as it was. Um, uh, has a different role to play, and that's really important. Um, there are a huge number of members worldwide, and it's ever growing. Um, that's important just because of the access it gives to you, and the fact that the more people it attracts, the more people, particularly employers, tend to use it. Recruiters use it. Again, we'll talk a bit more about that later. But importantly, there are lots of different reasons why people are on LinkedIn, and another bit of a, not so much a myth, but a misunderstanding is that. Some people approach us um, and they say, I'm not really sure if I should be on LinkedIn. And if I'm on LinkedIn, I'm really a bit um, a bit wary of updating my profile for fear of attracting the attention of my bosses or the business that I'm currently with. And, and it maybe makes it look like I'm looking to move. Um, so there are obviously people out there who are looking uh, and, and using LinkedIn as a tool to find jobs and to seek out better opportunities. Um, and that's fine. And one of the messages I'd like to convey this evening is, is don't be too perturbed about this sort of, if I do something on LinkedIn, it attracts the attention. It, the way LinkedIn's being used by so many people now, uh, only a, a snapshot I'm going to give you tonight, is, is so varied that you really ought to try and do as being something that people are just doing for all sorts of reasons, not just looking for jobs. And therefore, being actively involved in it or having a presence on LinkedIn is not as negative and shouldn't be treated as negatively as some people might think, particularly by employers. Um, so there's job seekers out there looking for opportunities, trying to connect with people that might be able to promote their um, abilities, services, and, and, uh, and offer them a better job. There's professionals out there just doing general research for their own contact purposes um, and for all sorts of reasons. Um, there's obviously, the other side of the table, recruiters and hiring managers wanting to source people. And that is the big growth area. Um, it's quite possible that LinkedIn probably wouldn't exist in its current form if it wasn't for the huge amount of revenues being generated by its recruitment side. Um, and again, I'm assuming, because of the conversations we have with most of the people that deal with us, is that a lot of people are not as aware as they perhaps should be as how important LinkedIn is now as a recruitment tool. So even if you're not that interested about applying for jobs that you might see on LinkedIn, or you don't think that is that important, 
if you're on LinkedIn or if you want to be visible to recruiters and hiring managers in the sectors and industries that you're interested in, um, LinkedIn is now becoming almost the default option for these people to go and source and search for candidates. Uh, the tools that are available to those parties are very powerful. In some cases, they're quite expensive. Um, and so the users are wanting to sweat that asset and make the most of it. But don't un underestimate how important LinkedIn is now to recruiters and hiring managers. Even small operators on the recruitment side will use LinkedIn to source people. And quite often, people will be sourced before the recruitment process goes any further, i.e. before they invest any more money in uh, internet advertising or traditional press advertising or appointing search consultants. Um, so if you're not on LinkedIn, this is why it really needs to be a big question as to whether you should consider being on LinkedIn. And if you are on LinkedIn, it's now critical that the message that you're conveying to your audience or your target audience is uh, in line with their expectations. Because it, if it's not, it could damage your prospects. And something is you'll never find out, or it's very, very unlikely you'll find out that those prospects are being damaged. You just won't really get many phone calls or emails coming through about interesting opportunities. Um, there's a few other people that might matter, depending on your own objectives and needs. There are all sorts of folk out there, entrepreneurs, who are either wanting to showcase their business, try and grow it, and attract interest from people that might be able to help them. And for some of you, that might be an interesting opportunity to get a new role. Um, and or even to bring to your attention things that, that you might not otherwise have been aware of. And of course, if you're in the commercial field selling, prospecting, it's a really useful tool to find new contacts. Um, so there's, the message here is all sorts of people are using LinkedIn. It's not just a job seeking tool. It's not just, not just a recruitment tool. And therefore, there's all sorts of reasons why people would want to be active on LinkedIn. And, and the reason why I mention that is to try and, again, get across this message that because it is being used by all sorts of people for all sorts of reasons, if you're a bit concerned about being on LinkedIn and what it might tell the world, I would say try and um, remove that concern unless, unless there's a very clear reason that you know, if you do dabble in LinkedIn, there seems to be then direct consequence in terms of somebody tapping on the shoulder and, uh, and maybe... Um, advising you not to be so active in the job market, but that's very rare. I mean, to be honest, most evidence suggests that um, anybody who thinks that their employee base is on the lookout for any opportunities, if they're a good employee, actually there's a lot of evidence to suggest it helps get that employee um, more salary, more benefits, an arm around the shoulder, a better car, whatever you might think it might be. But most employers, if they've got a good person on board and they think there's a, there's a chance that that person may move on, Guess what? They'll um, they'll try and uh, in, um, in, in, in induce and in, in, infuse that person to stay with them. So um, there's some really good reasons as to why you should be on LinkedIn. Um, we're going to look mainly at the um, job seeking uh, element and uh, audience that would be using LinkedIn this evening. Um, you'll note at the bottom of this slide um, a really interesting. Uh, statistic, which is that last year, actually the year before last now, um, more people found a job through LinkedIn than Monster.com, which is the world's biggest job site. That's how important it has become. Um, it's not as um, uh, high profile as some of the job boards, but that's because a lot of the stuff goes sort of on in the background, um, and LinkedIn's main purpose isn't seen to be recruitment. Um, so that's that's really why um, it's become such an important tool. Of course, it gives you as an individual the ability to go and search for jobs and apply, um, and interestingly, access to a network of people that might work at a particular target company. So there's some use there. Um, it, of course, allows you to search for target companies that might be of interest to you, and again, access to people who might work there. So that's all useful. Um, it allows you to search your decision makers and add them to your own network and connect with them. And some people are quite active and good at this, and some people aren't. Um, but if you're not networking using LinkedIn, it's a really good tool for quickly identifying people that might be of interest to you. Um, you can get introduced through others, obviously, to um, further some inquiry or line of inquiry. Um, but particularly useful is the, the ability to participate in discussions 
um, act as a um, provider of answers to questions through the LinkedIn answers and LinkedIn questions facilities. All of those activities help build your profile and awareness to others. So um, whilst you don't necessarily have to be active on LinkedIn, there are certain benefits of joining groups, associations, um, and participating in them because that will increase the level of exposure you get. So don't underestimate the power of it as a tool merely to gain exposure for you if that's something that you're interested in. And if you're looking to target employers directly, of course, it's a great way of being able to find out who maybe those people are. And most employers are actually quite receptive to approaches if they think you've got the skills and talents that um, would be useful to them because it's going to save them money. If they can stumble across the right person almost for free, they're going to be very pleased days and spending a lot on recruitment fees and that's partly driven a lot of LinkedIn success. There's small businesses, medium sized businesses, large corporate operations, all on LinkedIn, all looking for people. It's very easy. They do a quick search. If they think they're onto something, you may have experienced this yourselves. You get a quick uh, email or email um, or contact um, and somebody might be interested in talking with you about an opportunity. Um, the more you participate, the better your profile is, the more likely that's going to happen. Now we're going to talk a little bit about actually um, writing the profile now. So I just wanted to give a bit of backdrop in terms of uh, main messages being, it's really important. If you're not on LinkedIn, I would suggest you really ought to consider being on it. And if you're still concerned about being on LinkedIn, but you want a little bit more help or advice, then approach me on a one-to-one -one basis. I'm more than happy to have a discussion about the, the pros and cons of being on or not, or to deal with any concerns you might have. But I mentioned right up front that we look at some of the quick wins in terms of being able to um, write your LinkedIn profile and, and get it up to spec. But before, we need to take a bit of a step back because most people tend to use their current CV as the foundation for their LinkedIn profile. One of the other messages you should take away from this evening is it's just not acceptable to copy and paste your CV, which a lot of people do. They almost take their CV and dump it into LinkedIn, and indeed there is a facility with LinkedIn which will sort of semi-automate that process. Um, that's not the best way of doing things, although that, that, that service exists, it's not really acceptable. And to the average recruiter and hiring manager, it will look um, substandard. It will look like you've not bothered, uh, and it, you can tell it a mile off. So it's important that if you are using your current CV as the platform and foundation for your LinkedIn profile, be very wary about what message that's sending. Um, bigger question, of course, is if you are using that, uh, your current CV, that is, as the foundation for your LinkedIn profile, how do you know whether your CV is the best set of foundations to build your profile on? And our argument would certainly be based on the evidence we see day in, day out, is that most people's CVs are wholly ineffective. So if they're just porting that information across to another device, i.e. LinkedIn, um, you're just multiplying that ineffectivity, if you like. So. Um, one measure to help you identify whether you are, have got a CV that's effective or not, if you're and assuming that you're active in the market, then um, the ACID test is uh, what we call the interview to job application ratio. So crudely, you spot 10 jobs that you think you've got a reasonable chance of performing. So it does assume, of course, that you're applying for jobs that you're qualified to do to some degree, even if it's a bit of a stretch, but you're considered as a valid applicant for the role. You apply for 10 of those roles. If you're getting eight, nine, 10 interviews, you've not got a problem with the CV. And so happy days, you can move on and develop your LinkedIn profile and it probably will do well for you. However, if you're not getting any interviews at all or only one or two or three, even four or five out of the 10, it would suggest that there may be something wrong with the CV. And the lower the ratio, the more it suggests the CV is just ineffective. Getting accurate feedback on that is really tough. Most people won't tell you to your face or even in an email that your CV is not effective or poor or horrible or worse. Um, but the statistics will tell you everything. If you're not getting the interviews for jobs you know you could perform, it's probably because the CV is letting you down. Um, the only exception to that, of course, is if you're already known to somebody um, and that obviously is not a good thing if they're still not interviewing you, but uh, more, more often than not, it's the CV that's the problem. So poor CV, of course, is going to mean poor LinkedIn profile if all you're doing is copying one from t'other. So the way to view it, and the way we would view it if we were 
doing this on your behalf is that both your CV and your LinkedIn profile must represent a business case to your target audience as to why they should consider hiring you. Um, now, th tonight's not the time for going into the details of how that's structured. Um, I will give you some sort of headline news about how to get the key parts of LinkedIn sorted very shortly to help build a business case, but the detail is exactly that, and it would take quite a long time to go through. Um, but the bottom line is you need to view yourself as being a product or a service, as I hinted at earlier, and therefore the message you should be sending to your target audience if you're looking for jobs, whether it's permanent contract or anything else for that matter, is why should somebody bother considering hiring you? And if you're not doing that on your CV and LinkedIn profile, you will suffer the consequences either mildly or otherwise. And again, the stats will tell you everything about whether you're getting interviews. So another a bit of a test is that you know, if, you've got a, um, if you've got a bad CV, um, it's probably because it's presenting your target audience with a, a list of things. So by that I mean if all you're doing is in effect saying, here are my qualifications, here's the job that I've been doing, here's my job title, here are the responsibilities and duties that I have within that job, um, this is my employer, um, and then chronologically looking backwards, here's all the other stuff that I've done in my life. And it is just a list of facts. That's bad. Um, and it's bad if it's replicated on your LinkedIn profile. Con um, conversely, a good CV and LinkedIn profile combined will be one that, in effect, provide the justification as to why somebody should bother interviewing you and potentially hiring you. Um, and that business case will touch on it a little bit, as I say, but it's all about you know, what, what have you got to offer the world, basically. If your CV is not conveying that, then um, it's, it's not helping your cause. Um, just out of interest, I will give you shortly a link. Um, for those that have not already been on one of our CV webinars, which touches on this business case in a whole heap more detail, um, then it's probably something you might want to consider. Um, you, you might have received an invite to this already, but if not, I'm just going to put into the um, chat facility that you should see a couple of times a link to a webinar we're running um, Thursday 16th, which deals exclusively with the CV and how that's all built up. So that might be useful for anybody who wants to take advantage of that. And we'll go into building a business case in a, as a, a lot more detail. Um, and then it sort of implies if you get that bit sorted, you can then port that across to LinkedIn far more effectively. Um, note at the bottom of the screen is that always remember that LinkedIn is a massive database um, which is being used actively day after day after day by the very people you're trying to target. So irrespective of whether you've applied for a job via a traditional job board, directly to an employer, or through a recruiter, LinkedIn is now so influential with all of those parties that people will go to that and check you out anyway, but they might find people, candidates, your competitors, maybe yourself, um, before they even see your CV sometimes because they'll have done a LinkedIn search. Um, so again, I'm just trying to get over the point. It's really important for those people that haven't dawned on already. It's, it's a really influential tool for recruiters and employers. Okay, and in terms of those people that are familiar with LinkedIn, um, I'll, I'll show you some examples shortly, some live examples of, of, of real-life LinkedIn profiles. Um, the actual structure of LinkedIn um, is, by default, quite useful, of course. I mean, it, it, that's its stock in trade. But there are some things that, if you don't get right, um, harm your prospects of getting noticed, uh, and possibly the message that people take from your profile will um, uh, be viewed more negatively than it ought to be. So I'll just go through, as I said, some quick wins in terms of things that you should keep an eye on um, and, um, and take the time to... Uh, either amend or refine depending on your your own needs and what you're trying to do. So when you first click into a, um, a LinkedIn profile uh, and take a view at it, apart from the name, the thing that appears under the name is called the professional headline. Um, it's limited in terms of characters. Um, it's quite a small, less than a tweet, um, including spaces. So you don't have lots of text. Um, but a professional headline should be, um, in effect, uh, again, a bit of a cliche, your value proposition, not the job title um, that you currently have, which unfortunately LinkedIn will try and in 
force or recommend that you should adopt. And, and I'll show you why it's not such a good idea shortly. So the professional headline, the bit that appears under your name, should be more of a summary about what, what your uh, worth in life is and what you have to offer the world. And we call that the value proposition. If you don't know what your value proposition is, of course, there's a bit of a struggle. Obviously, we can help you with that. Um, but that's something you really ought to try and understand. And if you don't know it for LinkedIn, you ought to know it because it would be very useful for your CV. So most people's CVs and therefore what they put on LinkedIn tend to waffle on about how wonderful they are, the interpersonal skills that they've got, um, the fact that they can work in a team as well as an individual, that they're enthusiastic, dynamic, committed, and all these wonderful things, which actually aren't that wonderful at all. They do not help the recruiter or employer make a decision about you as to whether they should interview you one iota. They're all skills that are useful, but they're impossible to prove on a CV or on a LinkedIn profile. So they're almost worthless. What you need to be telling your audience is if they were to consider hiring you, what benefits would accrue? And that becomes your value, value proposition. So if you're a salesperson, the fact that you can sell and beat targets is part of the proposition. Or if you can deal with particular sectors, or you can manage certain projects, or you can uh, launch IT initiatives, um, or you can buy more efficiently than other people, or you can help fix people's um, education and teach people better and take students from one place to another. Uh, those, are, those are the kind of things you need to be focusing on, um, not purely what your job title is in your current employer. Um, so the, the LinkedIn's default setting, or what it offers to do for you, is if you're entering your career sort of history into LinkedIn, it will it will volunteer the fact that it will pinch that job title um, and where you're currently working and stick it in your professional headline space. Um, now, the reason why that's not good is because you've got a weird job title and it doesn't mean much to people. It's not going to help your cause. Um, if you've got a generic job title, that's not going to help you to the cause either. And if you've got a job title that actually sounds quite um, uh, at a quite a high level or a different level from that which you're targeting. So, for example, if you were a managing director, um, but you'd, uh, you, know, you knew the writing was on the wall or you'd lost your job and you're quite happy to consider being a sales director or commercial director, it's actually quite hard to convince recruiters and employers that you um, are somebody that could be considered for a role that might appear to be beneath you. So if you've got a job title that actually overstates your real position in life for whatever reason, leading with that on your LinkedIn profile is not such a clever move because you'll probably get missed out on searches because people won't be searching for managing directors for sales director roles. Um, and you'll also appear to be above the level of the role and people will just skim over you. So you need to consider what you're writing on your LinkedIn profile just under your name very carefully because it will convey a message to people straight away. and It's almost the first thing that they will see. Um, I said I'd show you an example. So let me just quickly um, put up onto screen a profile of our leader at CVIA, a guy called uh, Matt Craven. So, most of you should be able to see this now. The screens are just refreshing. So you'll see here, um, Matt, um, my boss, um, under his name is the text, which LinkedIn calls the professional headline. Um, so most people, as I say, tend to just leave with their job title, and uh, and that's it, and maybe where they're currently at. Some people even put um, looking for work available on the market, which is which is really not helping your cause however uh, desperate you may be to secure a role. What needs to be here is what you've got to offer the world, and you'll see in Matt's example, um, he said, MD, career enhancement leader, known for developing leading edge methodologies that drive success in the job market. So it's describing what advantages he has to offer the world. That is his value proposition. That's what he's good at. That's what people would be interested in using him for. Um, it's a whole lot better than just putting managing director. Because if he did that, you know, managing director of what? And is that the right level? And is that what people are wanting to see? And, it, and in most cases, it isn't. So if you've got there your current job title um, and maybe the fact that you were working for such and such a company, um, it, it's not a good indicator and, and ought to be changed. OK, um, let's return to slides. Um, you might have noticed underneath um, that or on, my, on Matt's own profile that the next bit that tends to appear 
on LinkedIn is the summary. That's just a describer, which again, most people tend to dump in the opening part of their own CV. Um, and again, if you've got an opening profile on your CV that runs something like, um, you might actually describe what you are, and then you go on to explain how um, how you are, again, enthusiastic, dedicated, um, committed, um, and that you can work well in a team or in isolation, um, and any of those behavioral things, then just copying that across to LinkedIn, again, is, is almost meaningless. Um, people will just ignore it. Um, it's not helping your cause. So that summary needs to have certain key things in it, which are, again, really easy to ascertain, but you just need to spend a bit of time thinking about it. And that is, first of all, to state exactly what you are. You'd be surprised how many people don't do it on the CV and then fail to do it on LinkedIn. Make it easy for the reader to describe what you are, um, either by generic job title or broad functional experience, but make it clear what you are. Um, what do you do? What is your purpose in life? Uh, what are you good at? So there are you know, a handful of things, typically four or five things that actually you can make a difference with. And finally, where you can add value. And here's an example. Um, it also the, the difference between a CV and LinkedIn is also important to talk about. We write our CVs for our clients in the third person, but in LinkedIn you need to write in the first person, uh, ideally. And I won't go into the reasons why, but it's just the way it should be done. So if we took the opening statement for a particular individual and the one on screen is for a senior finance director or senior finance person, um, the, the um, text on the CV would read in the third person, but we would adapt that on LinkedIn to, to read in the first person. If you just read through that yourselves, you'll see quite clearly it addresses those bullet point issues I just mentioned. It's clearly stating what the person is, experienced finance director. It's clearly explaining what they do and the value propositions combined in this as well, that being the ability to protect cash flow and profitability. It's clearly describing what this person is good at, which is a variety of things, including managing people and looking after particular initiatives at a particular level. And it, it certainly hints at what, they, what and where they can add value, which is uh, cost rationalization, removing costs, drive profitability. Now, anybody at any level, in any role, in any sector, in any country, anywhere, can write something like this. Um, as I say, the start point is normally the CV, because that's the thing that normally hits people first. Um, and if you get this bit right, then it's very easy to transport that across to LinkedIn. If you don't know what, what you are, that would be a concern, I suppose. A little bit e harder, I suppose, but again, equally easy should be really, what do you do? The what are you good at sometimes people find a bit challenging because it needs to be relevant to your target audience. So you may have a view on what you're good at, but is that what your target audience is expecting to see? So that's normally a bit more challenging. And where you can add value, perhaps more challenging still. A lot of people find that one a bit difficult. So you know, if we're doing this, we can help you with that kind of um, uh, teasing out, if you like, an identification of where you can really add value. But it's important you get that bit right, because if you pitch that properly to your target audience, you'd be surprised the difference it makes, um, because you'll be up against a lot of people who've not bothered to do that. So we've got um, opening part of your LinkedIn profile, your name, professional headline. You can tweak that, makes a big difference, um, sets the scene. It's helping to build that business case that I mentioned earlier. You've then got summary, so the under, under your name in the photo bit is that area of text where you can describe a whole variety of things, but what you need to be doing there is, you know, what are you, what do you do, what are you good at, where can you add value? A bit like that paragraph you can see on the screen. And that makes a good, strong introduction as to why somebody should consider hiring you or interviewing you, the business case is being built. Now, before we go into the next bit, which is about you know, the career history, and some of the highlights in your career. It's a very quick break here where I just explain some of the things that we get up to because most people ask at the end of the session, what do we do? Um, and it won't surprise you um, that Talent Spar has said to us, okay, look, if you're going to uh, talk to our audience that we've provided you with, um, are you going to be able to offer them any particular deal um, and help? Um, and we say, yes, for those that are interested, of course we will. So we help people 
uh, write their CVs and, and LinkedIn profile either from scratch or uh, and in the case of LinkedIn we can amend one if you've already got it that's what we do day in day out um, if if you do or are interested in that kind of process and, and do decide to take professional help um, the way it works is that you'll have gathered there's a lot of research needed there's a lot of um, work required to ascertain what makes somebody tick and what's valuable to their marketplace if you think you can jump on LinkedIn and do a great profile in five or ten minutes, um, I'm afraid uh, it, that's just not going to happen. It's quite an in-depth process. It takes us between one and two hours on average to get from each individual, and sometimes more than that, the right raw data to work with be able to be able to build their profile, let alone the CV. But if we do do that, what we're able to do is clarify what you're trying to do, first of all, which is important. So we need to understand where you're heading and what you're trying to do. Define what that value proposition uh, is. Um, some people find that really difficult. They don't know it. They genuinely don't know it. And that's not, not a big deal. We can, we can help work on that. Um, and for those of you who see yourself, particularly if you're a contractor, as a brand, as a service, we can help define what that is and that proposition. Um, we can then assess where your real value-added skills are and talk about some examples and we'll come on to that later about how you demonstrate particular examples that prove the claims you're making either on your CV or your LinkedIn profile um, and if we are working on your LinkedIn profile um, one of the things people are concerned about is well will everybody see that stream of updates that you sometimes get when somebody's changed their job title um, or even just the spelling of their job title, and you get this whole load of emails saying Joe Bloggs has you know, moved jobs, and actually all they've done is change the spelling. So you can switch all of that off. Again, not a lot of people know how to do that, but we, of course, switch that all off before we make any changes, then make the changes, check you're all okay with it, and then switch it back on so that uh, people are none the wiser about all the changes that have gone on until they actually see your profile. Um, so. That, that's what we do. We're, we're able to offer those services, and right at the end of the session, um, I'll show you a special deal um, that uh, we give to Talent Spa uh, delegates uh, and attendees of our webinars um, that might help if you're interested in that. Um, coming back to the profile itself, um, so if we've described on trying to build a business case for why somebody should be interested in you. And we've, we're starting to provide that case with uh, yeah, a better professional headline, a summary of what you're about and what you've got to offer the world. Then the next section, which typically appears in the profile, is you know, where have you been, what have you been up to, um, what have you done, and who you've worked for. And our, our view here is that a lot of people, again, because they just dump their CV in, um, if they've got the CV wrong, you're just replicating those errors on your LinkedIn profile. So the best advice is don't provide loads of detail on each role, don't provide so much information to your audience that they can make a decision without actually speaking with you. In an ideal world, and it is an ideal world, it doesn't always work this smoothly, what you're trying to do with a LinkedIn profile is to give people enough information to feel enthused to want to talk with you or engage with you or to uh, communicate with you in some way or other um, to find out more. In, in an ideal world, the recruiter or in hiring manager would look at your profile and think this person looks really good relevant and appropriate I hope they'll be interested in what we have to offer what you don't want it to be is a sort of a, a desperate statement of your need to find work however the desperate you may actually be because that will turn people off um, it's not the done thing um, and it will stand out like a sore thumb for all the wrong reasons so you need to get the balance and, it, and it, it's hard sometimes, but a summary of each role will suffice. Um, and in other words, what you don't need to be doing is listing all the things you've done, all the duties and responsibilities, all your achievements. So you don't really want to be in a situation where there's lots of bullet points, much as you might find on the CV or your job description. That's not what you ought to be aiming for. But you obviously want to put some achievements. You want to give your audience a flavor of what you've got to offer in each role that you've had. And broadly, depending on the length of your career, you don't really want to be listing everything you've done because that sometimes will work against you as much as it might work for you. So again, best practice tends to be detail. When I say detail, you know, brief summary of each role, some of the achievements, what you've been up to. Um, 
for the last eight to ten years if that's applicable or four jobs and it really depends on the time spent in those jobs as to which which criteria you use or is most appropriate that's a broad indicator what you ought not to be doing is listing everything you've done since the 70s if you've been around that long even the 80s now nowadays or the 90s most people are only going to be interested in what's happened most recently and that will be sufficient for them to make a decision on whether they want to progress um, at some interest with you or not. One area um, that tends not to be used very often by people at all, in fact some of you may not even realize it exists, is um, uh, an area of LinkedIn called projects. Now again I'll show you uh, a hopefully a real life example of this. So this is um, this is my profile, which has been hammered recently because we've done a number of websites. So, um, uh, what I really wanted to show you is top right of the screen as your screens refresh. Top right, you'll see um, recommended for you and a sort of a squiggly arrow pointing down, and then four menu choices or uh, bars: one experience, two education, three photo, and number four projects. And for those that haven't used that before, it is a really, really useful way of being able to highlight things that you have done um, that you're possibly proud of, but importantly are relevant to conveying a sense of what you're able to offer a potential employer. Um, we might come back to that in a minute, but let me show you a little bit more about um, what's important with a project. Um, and uh, as I said, not many people use that. Um, it's it's a it's a place to showcase examples of your work and when we're writing people's CVs we feature these on the CV to help build your business case and we use a methodology called STAR which some of you may have heard of and there are other versions of, of a similar nature um, which all mean the same thing but in this case STAR means situation task actions result and it's a really nifty way of being able to take complicated projects or assignments, um, compartmentalize them, and then put them together in a fairly concise manner. It's a great way of answering competency-based questions if you can do it on the fly. Um, it's useful on CVs to draw out certain projects, highlights, achievements, events that are important um, without going on and on and on. Now, the example on the screen is real life. Again, it's from Matt's CV. Um, and it involves, uh, I won't read it verbatim, you can do that yourself, but the, the key bits are the situation is the description about what on earth this thing was about. So in this case, it's the first sentence, ERAC, which stands for Enterprise Rent-A-Car, just so you know, not, not that relevant, but just so you know. So Enterprise Rent-A-Car acquired an unprofitable competitor, blah de blah de blah 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 That's the situation. The task was the responsibility resting on Matt's shoulders to actually do something. So he was appointed operations manager, so it clearly states the role he had to rebrand the business and do some other bits and pieces. That's the task. The actions form the bulk of the rest of the paragraph, so they're things that he did to execute the task. Um, and then the final sentence, starting with succeeded on the penultimate line of the paragraph, is the result. And in this case, it's quite positive because he turned around the business achieve profitability within a reasonably tight time scale. So that is a really useful way of taking a complicated project, one that probably ca caused him lots of heartache, took at least six months as it would seem, um, uh, but yeah, if he were to explain that war and peace fashion wouldn't help anybody. So in a very small, very modest paragraph he's been able to describe something that's meaningful, relevant, impactful, quite concisely to an audience. So when we're writing CVs for our clients, this is the kind of thing that we do. If we're writing a LinkedIn profile and we've not done the CV, we would look for this kind of evidence to support uh, the building of your CV, uh, sorry, the building of your LinkedIn profile um, and this business case that I keep going on about. This is the proof to give people so that they feel more comfortable that what you're saying about yourself is just not a lot of hot air. It's the substance to prove all the other things we've just spent some time explaining both in your professional headline and the summary and indeed the uh, career history on LinkedIn. It's giving some real tangible evidence as to your abilities. 
So um, that's that's a, an area that I'd wholeheartedly recommend if you haven't put them on your LinkedIn profile, you get stuck in and do something like that or get us to do it for you, but to use those projects because um, they really do help build the business case and not many people do use them. Uh, it's still relatively rare and, and indeed a lot of people don't even know that facility exists. So that's a real quick, quick win. Um, but it does imply, of course, that you know which are relevant projects um, and that you can write them in a succinct manner. There is a limit to how many, how much text you can fit into these boxes within LinkedIn. The way we do it is well within that limit, whilst maintaining a nice positive story. Um, but don't just list any old random things. Again, a lot of people make the mistake on their CV of just listing things they think are important or they were quite happy with, but they completely ignore the target audience, which is fatal. So there's no point in listing projects, assignments, achievements on your CV or LinkedIn profile if they're not relevant to what your target audience is expecting to see. Um, and that's not that hard to find out because most jobs require proof of certain elements. If you're in sales, you just need to provide evidence of selling stuff. If you're a teacher, you need to provide evidence of actually teaching and getting results out of people. Um, if you're a project manager, guess what? It's completing projects within budget and on time, generally speaking. If you're a buyer of things, it's about buying and maintaining healthy margins, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it isn't too hard to get the relevance right, but you'd be surprised how many people still go to market with what appear to be afterthoughts or things that are totally irrelevant to the marketplace but were quite important to the individual. Don't get the two confused. Okay, briefly some other considerations um, about the profile. Some th These are things that are important but um, aren't quick wins in some cases. The, the, the three key things we've just talked about, the professional headline, the summary and the project section, they're quick wins, they're quite easy to affect, need a bit of thought, but quite easy to affect, make a big difference to your profile on LinkedIn. Get those right, you'll notice the difference. People will um, find it a lot easier to assess your abilities. There are some other things that we have time tonight to go into detail about, but we would consider if we were working with you on your profile. Um, that is, if you're looking to network or influence or connect with people, you'll know if you've tried this on LinkedIn that there's a default message which is words to the effect of, yeah, I'd like to connect with you, I saw your profile, you know, click here and connect. Um, if, you're, if you're really trying to approach somebody important and influential who might be somebody who would look to interview you or consider you for an opportunity, don't just go with the default message when you're trying to connect with somebody because it just looks um, like, again, they're, they're an afterthought that you've not bothered, you're not considering their needs or situation in any way, shape or form. So type something more appropriate. Um, there is another area that, again, most people are familiar with on LinkedIn, um, which now has little photos of people that have endorsed you for a whole range of skills or expertise. Again, most people tend not to use anywhere near the amount of skills or expertise that they could tick and select from LinkedIn's various um, criteria. I think you're allowed up to 50 or 50-something, 50 give or take, um, skills in total. Um, rarely do we see anybody going beyond 20. Um, loads of them are in there by default they really help your visibility. So imagine the other side of the table, the recruiter or hiring manager, they're using LinkedIn search capabilities. If they bought a recruitment package, they'll have really powerful search criteria available to them beyond your basic profile that you might be used to um, if you've got a basic profile and even beyond the sort of premium LinkedIn account abilities as well. Very powerful ways of searching for people. Part of that search will be using the skills and expertise area within LinkedIn and they'll tick the ones that they're interested in. Um, if you've not aligned your profile with the skills that you actually have, um, guess what, your profile will be less visible. So there's a really easy way of increasing the profile of your profile. Um, where you can, but only where it's appropriate, get into the habit of writing recommendations for people um, because a bit like having a website and getting your link mentioned in other places, which then benefits the visibility of your website. The same is true with the LinkedIn. Um, don't go overboard. Don't make insincere gestures um, or this sort of uh, backslapping thing that sometimes goes on with I recommend you if you recommend me. People will see through that. But where you can write genuinely positive recommendations for people 
where it's relevant and appropriate, that helps, again, on the visibility of your profile. Join groups um, that are relevant, uh, you know, associations, groups, um, because that will give you access to people who you might not ordinarily be able to get access to if you've got a basic profile, uh, basic membership with LinkedIn. It's really important. Um, if you participate in those groups and start building some credibility, that will help. People will see you. They'll notice you. They might pick up on you and, and, uh, and keep an eye on you. Um, again, do it anywhere it's relevant. Um, where you can collect recommendations for yourself, again, assuming they're from people that matter, i.e. former bosses, managers, colleagues, people who've hired you if you're a contractor, um, where you can build up valid, relevant recommendations, you're statistically three times more likely to get um, an interview or some kind of engagement um, from whoever's looked at your profile. It can make a big difference, but only if they're relevant, appropriate recommendations. So again, if they're from a mate down the pub um, and it's obvious that they're a colleague or in your peer group, it's not so effective. Um, you can, for those that are aware of this, if most people have a LinkedIn URL, which is a whole load of numbers and characters that means nothing to nobody, um, take the time to have a look at whether you, um, your name exists in the pool that, that effectively gives you what we call a vanity URL, i.e. it's more closely fitting to your name if you've not already done it. Um, so it's much easier for people to, recommend, uh, to um, recognize or to type if they have to do it, or it just looks more professional if they click on the link. And move sections around within LinkedIn. Um, I'll show you again an example of this for those that don't already know this. There's a lot of hidden things in LinkedIn, the time for which we don't have tonight, I'm afraid. Um, but you'll see, uh, just appearing on your screen now, um, my rather, as I say, abused LinkedIn profile. But just to give you an example, um, if you can see it, there's a little uh, up and down arrow on the far right of every section within LinkedIn. And if you grab that and, and just reposition any section you like, it'll just snap back into somewhere else. Um, again, we don't have the time this evening to talk about which bit should go where, but if you didn't realize that, those where it's still refreshing, you should still now, you should now see my summary we should be towards the top of the LinkedIn profile. I've now just dragged and dropped much further down. Um, obviously, it's not, not where it should be, but all these sections can be reordered. Um, and there is a, the default setting actually isn't the best setting in LinkedIn, um, which is unfortunately the case for many things to do with LinkedIn. So um, it's worth playing around with that. And as I say, when we work on our clients' um, profiles, we reorder the sections into a more effective flow. So again, it's helping to build the business case to your target audience, which is the important thing. Um, comment at the bottom of the slide that now, now should be on your screen in red. It sounds a little bit obvious, I guess, to some degree, but it's really important. And it just, again, reinforces the importance of LinkedIn as a tool in that uh, the vast majority of hiring managers or recruiters will check you out on LinkedIn if you're, if you're initially strong enough to make the shortlist. So the stats go something like this. Um, again, it sounds a bit obvious, but you apply for a job. 90-something percent of people will be selected purely on the contents of their CV, because in most cases, that's the only tool that the recruiter or hiring manager has to make a decision. So the CV is really important still, because it's the tool that more often than not gets you the interview, um, or at least gets you through the process where somebody thinks you should be interviewed. Of that 90 odd percent, um, and the, the gap between 90 something percent and 100, just for those that are interested in stats, is that you know some people are genuinely known by word of mouth. Some people may, may be known to the recruiter or the uh, hiring manager already. Um, so the CV may have been less important, but the vast majority of people secure an interview because their CV did the job. Then. 85% of that 90-odd percent will check you out on LinkedIn. And there are quite a few cases where, unfortunately, people then have lost, lost out. Um, some cases it's because they've not updated their LinkedIn profile, so there's a disconnect. Um, sometimes that disconnect can actually be quite serious. Sometimes there are errors. Um, 
from our observations, the most common ones are that people have just taken a haphazard approach to LinkedIn. They've thought, well, I've got a profile. I've done a bit of work, and I've spent a Sunday, a couple of hours on Sunday dabbling around in it. Um, that's it, job done. And unfortunately, it's not. Uh, if there's any disconnect between your CV or any other piece of material that represents you and your LinkedIn profile, it creates more questions of a negative nature than it does anything else. Um, dates being out of sequence, um, job titles being different, even sometimes employers being different because somebody hit the wrong button at the wrong time or selected the wrong drop-down menu. Um, any inconsistency will work against you. More often than not, the problems are that they're just a completely different message, um, or in some cases because the message is exactly the same and not actually that strong. So you may have gotten through some kind of first stage, but then people actually just think, you know what, I can't, I'm not sure if I can be bothered. Or, the, or some junior person puts your CV forward for a job, and then a more senior person who knows their stuff looks at your LinkedIn profile and thinks, no, no, um, it, this, this isn't strong enough. Trouble is, you, you'll very rarely get to find out any of this, unfortunately, but we know it goes on. So uh, the message is, it's really important that your CV is right, but it's increasingly important that you get your LinkedIn sorted um, because it will make a big difference and sometimes negatively, unfortunately. Okay, what next? Well, because um, oh, we're almost done, um, I'm almost just within the hour as well. Um, so first decision you need to take, I guess, ultimately, is whether you actually need to do anything at all. So, um, and to help you with that, of course, remember that ACID test. If you're out there looking for work, um, or you anticipate you're going to need to be looking for work, um, you'll either know that your CV is okay, or you'll feel comfortable with it, or you'll already have the stats if you've been out there trying to get interest as to whether your CV is getting you interviews or not. That's the key measure, whatever anybody tells you, myself included. So you might have technically a horrible CV, but if it's got some gem on it that's recognizable to somebody out there, you might actually be getting away with it. Um, and that's the important thing. You want to be getting interest, uh, traction, interviews, whatever you want to call it, but some kind of engagement. If it's getting you that to a satisfactory level, um, and you then take that information across onto LinkedIn, you should be all right. But the stats will tell you everything. So that's the first decision. Do you need to do anything at all? And if, if, if you're getting enough interest, you're OK. If you're not getting interest, then the second decision you need to make is, whether you can fix that yourself or do you need to seek professional help. Um, and again, that's, um, that's a relatively easy decision because you can decide to do either or and then you can measure the stats and decide whether it's been an effective decision or not. So you can always backtrack. Um, but if you do decide that you need some help, then as I hinted at earlier, we've got some great offers available this evening um, that will help um, maybe ease the burden. So there's two things that we can offer uh, which are substantially discounted from our normal services. Um, for some people, they want to get the CV and the LinkedIn profile sorted together, and we can do that, uh, and we offer a package. This is for anybody with more than seven years' work experience, I hasten to add. If you've got less than seven years' work experience, um, it's not as an attractive deal. We'd need to look at it and maybe find out some other way of working with you. But for anybody with more than seven years' work experience, be it permanent contract or interim or anything else, um, normally our CV price is 299 plus fat. The LinkedIn profile is 50 quid plus fat. We do both of those as a special offer for 275 plus fat, so you're saving almost 90 quid. Or if you just want your LinkedIn profile sorted, it's 125 quid plus fat, which is saving 30 pounds. Um, the, the value options obviously to get both done um, because we're spending effectively a couple of hours with you to collect all the raw data. We need to do that whether you're just having a LinkedIn profile or doing your LinkedIn profile and a CV. That bit doesn't vary. So actually, the cost of doing LinkedIn profile on its own is disproportionately heavy, I'm afraid, to do it properly, because you can't guess what you're about. We need to, undercover, we need to um, understand what you've got to offer the world, what have you been doing, what's your value proposition, what you're trying to target, um, who you're trying to target, at what level. We need to collect all that information. We only need to do that once. But if we're writing your CV, of course, we can use all of that information for your CV and the LinkedIn profile. But if you just want a LinkedIn profile, we can do that. Um, that offer is available until next Monday, close of play next Monday. And for anybody that is interested, if you do order the first 10 orders, also get a free cover letter and an interview coaching package. 
which is worth another 80 to 100 quid, um, so substantial. If you are interested in that, then there's a link you need to go visit or keep and store until Monday. And I will um, copy and paste that because you can't click on it via your screen into the chat room facility. And then you can just keep that for reference. A few times there should be enough for people to to see. Um, and so um, if that is something you're interested in, by all means visit the website using that link that I've given you. Or if you want to discuss anything on a one-to-one -one basis, then by all means just give us a shout. Uh, visit our website, give us a call, send us an email to the email address on screen, and we can deal with any one-to-one -one -to -one issues um, there and then. If there's anything you want to ask question-wise, obviously I'll deal with those now. Um, and um, I may be able to help this evening if you're interested. Um, but that's the end of the webinar officially, bang up against the hour mark. I hope you found that interesting and relevant. Um, I think the main messages are whatever you're doing, build that business case as to why somebody should hire you. Um, and if you struggle with that, you can seek help. Unfortunately, it does cost money, um, but there's some great deals to support it if it interests you. Um, if you're not, then, um, you yeah, Good luck. Hopefully you've got some guidelines to follow. And if you're interested in taking a look at our CV writing webinar, which goes into the building the business case in a whole lot more detail, then use that link I posted earlier. Um, and you'll allow, you can register for that completely free, um, give a lot of advice. Um, and, um, and that's running Thursday, 16th of January, so next Thursday. Um, now, I'll, as I promised, I'll now come on to the questions, if there are any. I think there are a few coming up. So if you need to sign off and go off and do other things, have your tea or whatever, um, by all means, um, you can sign off now. And, um, and Happy New Year to you all. Um, and thank you for your time. Meantime, if you want to hang on and listen to the answers to the questions, I'll go through them one by one, as many as I can cover. And, um, uh, uh, and then um, hopefully I'll answer those queries. Um, I've just seen one. I'm sorry it's out of sequence, but somebody wanted to see that CV webinar link again. And if you just bear with me, uh, Julian, I will get it and post it for you if you need to disappear quickly. So just give me a couple of seconds. Uh, here we go. So the link that's being posted now on screen, again, I'll just do it a couple of times. If you click on that, it allows you to register much as you did for the um, this evening's webinar. It's Thursday the 16th of Jan, so next Thursday, same time, uh, same place, as they say, 7.15. Uh, and it's all about the CV and building the business case for a CV and how to construct that. Um, so uh, but very useful if you're considering about updating your CV, and particularly if you then want to use that as a foundation for your LinkedIn profile. Now, I will now go back to the beginning of the questions and answer them as much as I can. So, Danny, if you're still online, uh, you mentioned hot skills. I work in this program, also, therefore support programs, project portfolios, all different aspects of PMO. What are the hot skills need to be aware of? Good question. Um, a little bit depends on the sector you're working within, Danny, but it's, um, it's a combination of things. So it's partly to do with the kind of programs and projects you're looking after, or you know, portfolios of projects, um, and the industry sector that you're in. So it's, it's linked to that. Um, and we, we would know instinctively, because we cover so many areas, which ones to mention. Um, and then it's just providing the evidence to support any claims you've made. So when we're writing a CV or a LinkedIn profile, it, as I say, we're building a business case. That starts off fairly lightly by saying, this is what I am. These are things I'm good at. Uh, this is what I have to offer. And I, I can add value in the business in this particular way. Um, and then we're looking for proof to support it. So we'd want to delve into some of those projects. Um, that you've been working on and demonstrate um, as much as possible your abilities. So it's a combination of things. Um, but for example, on the lean end of the scale, if you like, the fact that may maybe if you've got Prince 2 or some similar level of project management qualification, that is a hot skill. Um, if you've got particular knowledge of, um, I don't know, let's think, um, high value contracts, 
um, or projects or, or procurement in certain areas or certain IT levels of ability, um, uh, then it's those kind of things. It's the stuff that people would expect to see for somebody of your level. Uh, so that could be qualification driven, it could be professional development driven, it could be sectorial knowledge, um, it could be size of contract knowledge uh, or project knowledge, it could be the nature of those projects, whether they were you know, high security um, or uh, you know, high profile, it, it's a combination of things that we'd soon grab hold of as soon as we'd seen your existing CV and started talking with you. Um, also, Danny, um, if you have any recommendations that go back a long way, do you keep them updating? Ah, good question, Danny. Yeah, any recommendations tend to be good recommendations, however old they are. So that is a slight, slightly different issue from career history. So the 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 the, the premise is if you if you've got a CV, its job is to get you interviews. Ditto the LinkedIn profile. It's highly unlikely anybody's going to be influenced by to any great degree as to whether they should interview you based on things that happened more than roughly eight to ten years ago. There are some exceptions to that, but again, you'd spot them a mile off as soon as you started talking to somebody. So by and large, you'll get interviewed on the basis of, or selected for interview on the basis of what has happened most recently. However, if the recommendations you have are older than that, but they still support the basic premise that you're good at something and have got abilities in a particular area, then of course you keep them on your LinkedIn profile because they'll all help. Um, a lot of the recommendations aren't time stamped in the sense that most people don't say, um, I worked with Joe Bloggs in you know, 1962 and they helped do this, that and the other. Um, so it, that helps. Obviously if it did say that, that's less than ideal. Or if it made reference to technologies that are old hat. So if somebody's saying, um, I worked with Danny, and he was instrumental in um, you know, going from uh, DOS 3.1 to Windows 3.1, if such a thing was relevant, then, again, that doesn't really help your course, because most people look at it and think, what? <laughs> so um, as long as they're not so referenced by time, however old they are, doesn't matter, they're, they're all good. Uh, Julian, um, please can you repost the CV? Oh, right, I did that. Uh, Jitesh. Thank you. Oh, right. Thank you. Uh, Damien's left the building. Um, good. Alison, uh, what do you have available for business owners who want to build their profile? Ah, really good question, Alison. I hope you're still online. That's a very good question um, and very appropriate. So, so Alison's saying if she's a business owner, she wants to build her profile for the business. Yeah, a um, couple of things, really. Um, a lot of people come to us and say, okay, look, we, we, we own a business, run a business, or, or a, like a contractor as well who, who's running their own business in effect and offering their services to, a, to the masses. Um, number of things. Some people like to have a sort of a CV. If, if it's a sort of business where you need to be able to promote your abilities, then a, sort of a cross between a biography and a CV works really well. Same premise applies. You're building a business case to provide your target audience with a positive message of your abilities. So we can help with that. LinkedIn profile, of course, a business can have a LinkedIn profile. Um, same rules apply. Uh, it's all about the content and the message you're sending to build the business case as to why people should be compelled to use your services or engage with you in some way. And then the other aspect that we tend to help similar people with is website content. Because, of course, if you've got a website, um, you're unlikely to be able to out get better visibility than LinkedIn will give you purely because of LinkedIn's clout. But if you need content to populate a website so that at least people are looking at it, if it's like a brochure site in the sense that you want something that people can go to to prove your existence, then we can take some of the content um, and then make sure that's appropriate for your website. So there's three levels on which you can approach the market as a business owner. Um, having some a CV of sorts if you need to provide evidence of your own personal abilities. Um, LinkedIn, either from an individual or a corporate point of view, and a website. So we can help. Uh, Malka, I hope that's helpful, Alison. Um, particularly in your case, Alison, if that's something you want to pursue, just drop us a line um, on, on the email address or visit our website and put a callback request on or something, and then I can pick up with that separately. Um, Malcolm, made redundant just before Christmas, had to take voluntary redundancy. Should I mention this or wait until people ask? 
Again, good question, Malcolm. If uh, it depends a little bit, devil's in the detail there. Um, and 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 when I say that, um, things like for those people that worked with Woolworths back in 2008 or whenever it went under, and indeed um, people who worked for Blockbuster recently, because it's such a high-profile situation, you probably wouldn't need to mention it in that context. Um, I would recommend, yes, in a way, you wait for people to ask. Also, the time gap is never so great right now in terms of you looking for jobs with a CV. You, you're not in a place where you have to explain what on earth's been going on right now. Um, there are plenty of people out there who've deliberately taken time out or been forced to take time out. Um, and I would say, rough rule of thumb, you probably ought not to worry too much before Easter about explaining the gap um, and then review it around Easter time would be my advice based on as much as I know right now, which obviously isn't a great deal. Um, so I, I suspect, yeah, you don't need to mention it right now, but possibly something we'd look at if we were working with you and just make sure that there was no obvious um, clue as to doing something different. Uh, Teresa, I think this is just a question. I'm interested in the first package for this one meeting. Where did it take place? Ah, right. Yeah, Teresa, yeah, good question. All of the stuff that we do is over the phone. Uh, it works really well. Um, some people do say, oh, you know, do you meet up face to face? We tried that. It doesn't work bizarrely. I don't know why. Or rather, we suspect we know why, which is that if, if you're sort of remote from the client talking about their CV, you get better answers, better quality of information. It's easier to press on certain things. Um, and so everything's done over the phone or Skype or whatever means of communication, but, but all audio. Um, it also helps keep the cost down, although you know, it's still a reasonable chunk of money. We understand that. But yeah, everything's done via phone or Skype or similar. Jitesh, uh, do you have to update your LinkedIn membership to get the most out of it, or can I remain on the basic free? Yeah, just, again, very good question, Jitesh. Uh, our recommendation, unless you're really active on the business development front, you can probably get away with basic membership, the free, the free membership, in other words. You're just as visible to people in the great scheme of things. If your profile's well written and well structured, you can keep to the basic um, profile and membership, and it will do you proud. Uh, all right, Malcolm, thank you again. Uh, a bit more clarification. So, uh, I'm trying not to read out stuff that obviously identifies anybody, just in case. But um, okay, doing all my attachments right. Okay, Malcolm, it depends what you're targeting. That's the key there. So um, if if you're looking to maintain a similar um, sector, are you still want to maintain, uh, you, you want to get back into a similar kind of job or in a similar sector that you've come from, um, then your, um, and, and a similar um, function, i.e. marketing loosely, um, then you should probably, yes, me mention that because it will mean something to most people. If you're looking to move outside of the sector that you've been running and working in for, I guess, a reasonable period of time, that might just, or, or indeed particularly looking to change the function and you're not interested in marketing anymore, probably would review that. Um, when I say review, there are two parts on the CV that you you sort of be you be clearly mentioning what you are. There's the opening statement, what we call the professional summary, or on LinkedIn the summary, which describes what you are. Um, you can be more flexible with that. So you could say that you were a senior marketeer if you wanted to stay within marketing. You wouldn't necessarily have to precisely put verbatim your job title. When you come to the career history then generally speaking, we recommend people are you know, whiter than white. You, you put what your title is just so that there's no confusion if anybody were ever to check you up or talk to your previous employer and um, and say, oh, well, we've got you know, Joe Bloggs here and they're saying that there's such and such a title. Uh, and somebody might say, well, actually, that's not what their title was. They were this. Um, <laughs> so we'd say whiter than white on the career history bit, which is buried deeper into the CV and the LinkedIn profile bit more flexibility on the what are you describing you are on the first page of the CV or the LinkedIn profile summary we could be you can be a bit more flexible there um, okay Alison, yeah sorry I understand that trail now so yes <laughs> contact me and just test currently looking for new contract headline status but after listening to you I may change it yes um, 
Yeah, Jatesh, good, good question. How do you make recruiters aware that you're currently available? And my answer to that, again, unless there's some strange detail that I'm not aware of, I, I wouldn't be bothered about making it, uh, making it known to recruiters that you're available. If you get your CV and LinkedIn profile sorted properly, um, you will you will be noticed by enough people and, and hopefully the issue will be then <laughs> in the nicest possible way stopping them ringing you once you've got yourself a new contract or job. Um, so I, I would yeah I would take it as read that if you're on you're on LinkedIn, you've made yourself uh, and your abilities clear to the world and you're applying for jobs um, or to recruiters then let let them assume that if you're applying for stuff that means you must be available don't publicize that to the world um, it does more harm than good um, and I know that might sound a little bit odd um, but really you, you want to appear to be somebody who they'd be glad to be able to talk about an opportunity you know dangle a bit of a hook in other words rather than make it obvious that you're desperately looking to do something um, and Malcolm again, success ratio when writing people's yeah uh, again very good and uh, obvious question I suppose. <laughs> and the answer is, excuse me, um, truth be told, we we don't know everything. Um, we write CVs and LinkedIn profiles for people, and um, sometimes we never hear from them again. But that's a positive reason because then we start, suddenly find out on LinkedIn, which actually is great for us because we can find out whether people have actually secured jobs and whether they secure jobs. So eventually we do find out. Um, some of the stats that we, we're comfortable on and have collected is that, generally speaking, um, for those people that um, had a CV, came to us, and we updated the CV and LinkedIn profile, and we tend to do both together. That's the most popular services that people buy from us is the CV, LinkedIn profile. And normally we see a 30 to 50% uplift in the traction that people are getting and the number of interviews people are getting them beforehand. Sometimes it's far more dramatic than that. In fact, we were recently working with somebody who's struggling. They've made 400 job applications and got nowhere. When we saw their CV, we understood exactly why. And, it, and to be honest, any anybody who understands any about CVs would have made the same judgment. So it wasn't as if we were sort of, um, you know, giving them sort of some kind of miraculous um, biblical moment of judgment. Um, it was obvious their CV was desperately poor. And nobody bothered to tell this poor person. Um, so we rewrote the CV, and then, lo and behold, they started getting interviews, and ultimately they did actually get a job. We would never want to claim that latter bit. There are too many variables. So whatever the success rate about getting people jobs, we back off from, in fairness, because it's not just about us. But we do have a good track record in getting more interviews for people uh, consistently, not flukes. Uh, we, we don't always, you know, there's sometimes some people who are in some really difficult situations, and, and we, we're honest with people and say, look, based on our assessment, it's going to be tough. We will tell you up front, we'll say, it's going to be tough. You've got to accept you're not going to win all the battles out there, but you'll win more of them. And if people approach it realistically, we can help them. Um, we can't suddenly turn people who've got real issues into people who are the most desirable candidates out there. You know, that, that's just not going to happen but we can improve matters and we'll give people an honest assessment before they sign on the line if that's required. Um, Alison, are you saying that if your profile is good enough, people will find you and approach you whether you're looking for a job or not? Yeah, good question. Yeah, absolutely, Alison. There's loads of evidence of that. Um, if, if uh, Obviously, if you choose to be visible to people um, and your profile is strong, um, then people will uh, in this even in this current marketplace actually and that's a good point in this current marketplace a lot of people assume that there are lots of people looking for jobs but there's lots of the wrong people looking for jobs if that makes sense employers are still incredibly frustrated at finding the or, or in your case I if I'm right if you're the, the business owner uh, anybody looking to find anybody good is, is still frustrated by the lack of talent out there generally speaking um, and that's sometimes just because there's a mismatch. It's because they're good people who have got who are not visible enough. Sometimes it's because there are lots of bad people who will never get anywhere because they're sending the wrong message. Um, a whole variety of reasons. But the bottom line is employers and uh, companies are finding it still tough to find the right people to fulfil whatever um, requirements that they have. Be that employees, businesses to support them, consultants non-exec directors, interim people, it's a struggle. And so if you get your bit sorted, 
you'll have people, um, I'd hesitate to say knocking on the door, that might be a bit over ambitious, but, but certainly approaching you um, and inquiring as to whether you were available to help them. Yeah, definitely. Um, Lee, how many certificates should I put on? Uh, again, devil's in the detail there, Lee. Um, it depends. Uh, rough rule of thumb is if they're all relevant, they should all be on there. Um, and it's all about relevance. So if you've got, um, <laughs> just a stupid example, but your 25 meter breaststroke badge ain't going to help you at all, nor is your cycle proficiency. But if they're all relevant professional qualifications that are going to mean something to whoever you're sending your CV to, then of course your certificate should go on the CV or and LinkedIn profile. Didn't talk much about that on LinkedIn, but there's a good place. LinkedIn will allow you to put all your certifications including membership numbers, expiry dates, and it will automatically find the provider of those certifications for most of the yeah, the generic popular stuff out there. There is a facility for that on LinkedIn. And I'd say, yeah, get that all on there if it's relevant to your target audience. But don't stick in stuff that isn't relevant. Um, and it looks like that's it. So I'll hang on for a couple more seconds. Um, but if there's any, um, so if there are any other questions, ask them away quickly. Uh, failing that, I'll bid you all good night. Thank you again for your time. Um, hope you found it useful. And by all means, um, contact us directly if you've got any other questions um, that we can help with. Um, and uh, yeah, best of luck to you all. And I say I'll give you about another 30 seconds, and then I'll sign off. So uh, yeah, good night to everybody, and thanks for your time.